If I am captured, I will continue to resist by all means available. I will make every effort to escape and aid others to escape. I will accept neither parole nor special favors from the enemy. Edwards? You okay? I'm okay, Sarge. How you fix the ammo? I've got seven clips, no grenades. No matter how hard he may have fought to prevent it, there is always the chance a fighting man may be captured by the enemy. So long as he keeps up the fight, there is no disgrace. For the prison camp is only an extension of the battlefield. Your name's Crane, huh? That's right. I'm putting you on the list. Are there many ahead of me? Some. Look, there's a guard coming. Now listen. Be on front of the chow line tonight. I've got a job for you. Yeah, right. Americans have escaped. For the enemy, the question now is, did an escape organization set up a mock fight to cover the escape? To get this answer, the interrogators unlimber every weapon. One of the most dangerous and subtle is the offer of parole. 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 Like a soft, inviting purr. Parole. In exchange for certain privileges. A promise he will not try to escape. Again and again the offer is made, till the whole camp seems to echo with the beguiling invitation. It's then every man must face up to what it really means. Military personnel of the United States Army are forbidden to give their paroles to the enemy. No member of the Army can give a parole to the enemy unless he's authorized to give it by a senior officer or the non-com in command. When these flatheads offer a parole, they're giving you exactly nothing. You're giving them something. How do you mean, Sarge? When you give them your word of honor, your parole, that you won't try to escape, you're one guy they don't have to worry about. Now multiply you by 10. That's two guards they can send someplace else where they need them worse. Having parolees in a camp makes their job easier in other ways, But too. even as he talks, the sergeant is worried about, about one of his men. P.F.C. Crane. Sure, he did his assignment all right. He had started the fight that covered the escape. But in prison camp, as elsewhere, a man is known by the company he keeps. Hey, Crane. Hey, get away from that fence, will you? For peace sakes, come on back here, boy. What's the matter? What's up? Shh. Come on back here. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Look, you stay away from that fence, will you? Shh. You heard what they said when they brought us in here yesterday? Nuts. Well, what do you want to take a chance on trouble for? Look, they got no true counting us yet. With luck, a guy Good might... Luck, you might stir up a hornet's nest. It's not just you and there. What about the rest of us? Listen, I was watching on the way here. About a mile north is a dry riverbed with plenty of brush for cover. Look, there's bound to be water somewhere along there for canteens. Now, look, Crane, will you listen to me? You would never make it five miles. L listen, why buy trouble? If, if, if they catch you, boy, no telling what they'll do to you. Just play it cool. Now, right? hell with that noise. Look, I heard they caught a guy from barracks number two last week, and all they did was sentence him 30 days in solitary. You like it here? I'll give it to you. Yeah, but chance will come. And when it does, I'm going out. 
Who said anything about liking it here? All I said was you're taking a chance. Look, do me a favor and take a walk, will you? I got things to think The about. sergeant has seen Crane's disgust for the parolee. And a few hours later, after Crane's interrogation, any further doubts about him are answered. He offered me a parole if I tell him the fight was framed. Said if I give my word of honor not to escape, I could have plenty of good food. And a room all of myself with a stove in it. I told him the fight was strictly on the level, and I should know because I started it. <laughs> I made a man, he told me to get the hell out. He seemed awful anxious to give me that parole. For the sergeant, although with guards around him, his expression can't show it, a moment of pride in a fellow soldier. For he knows the will to resist is what keeps a man alive until that inevitable, wonderful day. Soldier to resist in the battlefield of the prison camp is the only way to live, at peace with his soul and his fellow Americans. And for the parolee, what lies ahead now? The enemy has used him, discarded him, and there is no pension plan for collaborators. He deserves the scornful eyes of other men who had the will to resist who were ingrained with the spirit of the soldier's creed. If I am captured, I will continue to resist by all means available. I will make every effort to escape and aid others to escape. I will accept neither parole nor special favors from the enemy. never surrender of my own free will. If in command, I will never surrender my men while they still have the means to resist. I just know we're never going to get out of this alive. What kind of crazy talk is that? You fluffing your lid or something, kid? We're almost all out of ammo. What are we gonna do if they attack again? We're gonna get captured for sure. Captured hell. Ain't nobody in this hole gonna get captured. If we run out of ammo, we'll fight those cruds with our rifle butts. You can say that again, Dabrowski. Nobody in this whole company's gonna be captured yet. Don't worry, the old man knows what he's doing. We're gonna get out of this all right. What'd I tell you, kid? You got much ammo left? We got nine clips between us. How about grenades? We're fresh out. This is all I can let you have. Make them count. Don't worry, we will. Won't we, kid? Damn right we will. Here they go. Does every man understand he's to hold his fire until I give the signal? Yes, sir. It's just about close enough. Commence firing! Fire!
last one does. That's it, Sarge. Now what do we do? I'll find out. Hang on. I'll let you know. Captain, two of the 81s have run out of ammunition. Tell McCleskey to get those two squads over to the 3rd platoon. Report to Lieutenant Hillier. He can use some help. Yes, sir. It's the last bell, Pete. What do we do after this? What do we do after this? What you are about to see concerns the men of the 3rd platoon and what they did in their moment of truth. Pull back. Let's go. Some members of the 3rd platoon, the going is tougher. Between them and the reserves to the south flows a slow-moving but treacherous river. A soldier hates the idea of parting company from his weapon. For without his rifle, he is nothing. But now the big thing is to stay alive to fight again. And he makes sure to hide his gear so it won't do the enemy any good. Each man is on his own. Each man making his way to the reserves as best he can. The sergeant. The old pro of a soldier who knows he's going to make it. And the youngster who has forgotten his fear by now. Not far away, just a little longer. Hold on a little more.
but on his mind, even as he reaches the lines, is the question, how about his young friend? Did he measure up? Was he going to make it too? Halt, who's there? Halt, who's there? Going, going, hour after hour. What comes sliding into your mind at a time like this? A siren call. Surrender? Give up? Live it out in an enemy prison camp? Approaching steps of the enemy play a tune that washes over that call. A tune with a heartbeat that stirs and fires the blood of the American soldier. A heartbeat that lays it on the line. I will never surrender of my own free will. If in command, I will never surrender my men while they still have the means to resist. If I become a prisoner of war, I will keep faith with my fellow prisoners. I will give no information, nor take part in any action which might be harmful to my comrades. If I am a senior, I will take command. If not, I will obey the lawful orders of those appointed over me and will back them up in every way. For those who were involved, it's always the ticking of a certain clock that comes to mind when they think about the prison camp, even though the whole thing started when Sergeant Martin called them over. From here on in, we're really gonna get the business. Because if they don't know already, they soon will, that Johnson and Whitaker have escaped. They knew, of course. Had they not helped? They also knew the greater challenge lay ahead. The two who had escaped needed 48 hours to make the border. Their job, to give their two buddies that 48 hours. They won't find out. That they're sure gonna give it a try. Pull out, dear prisoners! Pull out! Pull out! Pull out! Okay, fellas. Now this is it. Remember what I said. Two men from this barracks are missing. Do not think that it will get far, however. You have accomplished nothing but to make trouble for yourselves. The enemy's campaign was started. They had 48 hours to go, to hold out. We will find out how this was done and who organized it. First man up, PFC Brown. Ordered served up on a platter, the members of the escape organization. Sure you don't want a cigarette? That American. The recipe, sweetness and light. Then, if nothing starts to rise, bring to a boil. Listen, Tig, I will have those names. Have you experienced solitary confinement? I promise you will not forget it. Forty hours to go. The men hear that Brown has been placed in the hole. 
How long will they keep them? Until they're satisfied they're wasting their time. Which they are. How about Novak? Any word yet? He's still up there. Novak! That's better. You really must 31 hours to go. Work. Now, once again, who are the members of the escape organization? Keep your eyes on me. Who are the men, Novak? It's stupid of you not to answer. Someone will. Why not you? You could sleep, Novak, on a real bed. 21 hours to go. How would you like to move into better quarters, hmm? With time racing past, the Inquisitor pulls out all stops on Corporal Blake. Did you know that the village below boasts many attractive young girls? Many a progressive prisoner has spent a pleasant evening in the village. You are an intelligent man, more intelligent than most of you. Can't you see that you will harm no one by telling us something that we will find out anyway? Well, all right. You see, I'm not angry. Return to your barracks. I've never been in the hole yet. Well, you wouldn't like it. it. Stinks. No plumbing, you know? <laughs> no room for plumbing. That interrogator's no dope. He trained for the job. But you fellas played it smart by not trying to play it smart. Just sit there like a dope with your mouth shut. That's the best bet. I, um, I think they're saving me for dessert. <laughs> Seventeen hours to go. You will come to understand, prisoner Martin, that every man of us in the People's Army is a friend of the American worker. We are not against Americans. You could do much more to help your fellow prisoners to better living conditions here in the camp, you know? If you help to disband such groups as this escape organization. Such groups do no good and only create trouble for the camp population as a whole. You could do much good for everyone here. Look at it in that way. I can promise that neither you nor anyone else will be punished for any past activities in such an organization if it is disbanded and we can be sure that it will operate no longer. What do you say? Stand up! Look down, Martin. At your feet. You will stand at attention until you answer my questions. And if one of your feet moves outside my little circle, I will have the guard put a bayonet point through it. Now, Martin, you are a member of the Organization for Escape. Is that not true? Is that not true? Stand still, Martin. You are an organizer. Is that not true? You will answer. Is that not true? Answer me. I guess I must have...
conked out. But not before that goon of his gave me a couple of souvenirs with his bayonet. Is there anything yet on uh, Johnson and Whitaker? No, no word yet. They've had time to make it to the border by now. We're gonna be okay. We just keep on sticking together. Because if we do, we'll come through this with a body and a conscience in one piece. And later on, when they thought about it, they thought of the clock in that airless, tension-filled room where the questions had come again and again. They would keep silent and keep faith. The unquenchable heartbeat of their will to live. Keep faith. Keep faith. With my fellow prisoners. I will give no information nor take part in any action which might be harmful to my comrades. If I am a senior, I will take command. If not, I will obey the lawful orders of those appointed over me and back them up in every way.